Oh. 
Good evening. We respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathered here tonight at St. Patrick's Cathedral. We pay our respects to the people of the Bunwarang, Woiwurrung, Wurundjeri and Eastern Kulin Nations. And we respectfully acknowledge their elders, past, present and future. The one thing that Christmas trees and Christmas cribs have in common is a star or an angel on top whose light shines down upon all that is beneath. Whether star or angel, its light illumines what otherwise would remain in shadow. It reveals delights and gifts, warmth and hope. But most especially, it reveals a child who would be the light of the world. Whether it was by the light from heaven glorifying the shepherds or the light in the heavens guiding the Magi, both the lowly and the mighty were led to the light under which all people could find illumination. In a manger among animals, the baby Jesus would open the eyes of shepherds and Magi alike, for they hoped for the gift of his light who would shine for all. Christmas is the living memory of the greatest gift we have ever been given, that of the Christ child, Emmanuel, who is God with us. He's the great gift of hope at Christmas, the gift of a God who is with us, who loves us and binds us together in all that is worth living for and who remains with us through thick and thin. Those old and wizened men of Jesus' nativity, Zechariah, husband of Elizabeth, and Simeon, the prophet in the temple, both learned to see by his light. For Zechariah, Jesus was God's dawning light for those caught up in the shadows of death and a guide for our feet on the way to peace. For Simeon, Jesus was the revealing light of salvation to all the nations and the hope of glory for all God's people. So may Jesus, child of God, son of Mary, and light to the nations illumine the darkened regions of our world and the shadowy places of the human heart. May we look to his light and find hope for our families and for ourselves. May the light of Christmas, the light of Jesus, spread out its rays to bring reconciliation between enemies, to light up bridges over troubled waters, to reveal new ways towards renewed friendships. A child, a light, a hope. May these be yours this Christmas. Albanians have been unable to gather in person and this Christmas carol special, part of which was filmed right here in St. Patrick's Cathedral, our spiritual home, is offered as a gift to all and a reminder of the real gift of Christmas. 
who is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is Christmas is presented by the Catholic Archdiocese of Melbourne and we're so grateful to our partners, Mercy Health and VMCH for helping to put this on. I'm Father Bernie Utri. I'm the Dean of uh, St. Patrick's or privileged to be the Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral. And I've been here now almost three years. And during that time, we've had a, I've, I've had a very interesting journey, I suppose, as Dean, uh, seeing that almost two years of it have been uh, in and out of lockdown. And one of the things that I've noticed uh, about the cathedral, and oftentimes, particularly during some of the lockdowns, I was in the cathedral filming on my own or with only a couple of other people, filming masses uh, online, streaming them to the, the wider world. I was very conscious that how beautiful this place is, but the real beauty of this place is the people. And even though this cathedral is a, a magnificent place and the many visitors that we do get here when we can be open, marvel at its beauty and um, the height and the light and the colour and the, uh, the simplicity in some ways of the cathedral. But there's something that, that inspires, I think, awe and wonder within it. But the cathedral is always at its best when it's full of people. And it's people that make this place the centre of the Church of Melbourne. And I suppose, if, if anything, during this Christmas season, I'd be inviting you all to come and, and uh, visit the, the Mother Church of the Cathedral. We've got lots of mass times and that over the, over the Christmas period. But it really is a, a, an extraordinary um, building. And as I said, the many visitors that come here marvel at its, its beauty. The architect, uh, William Wardell, was one of the leading experts of neo-Gothic architecture, and he studied under Pugin, the architect behind the Houses of Parliament in London. And when Wardell came to Australia, he was quickly picked up by Archbishop Gould at the time to create a cathedral for the growing town of Melbourne, as it was then. And they imagined this extraordinary um, place of worship, a place where people can come and sit and be quiet or can come and celebrate with thousands of people. Um, they, they really did dream big. And the end product of their dreaming is what we have around us today the beautiful expression of faith, and not only of the Archbishop and of the architect, but of the people of Melbourne over the centuries. Next year marks 175 years of Melbourne as an archdiocese and 125 years of the consecration of, of this cathedral. And the cathedral has served us well for that time, but it has always been the gathering place of the people of Melbourne, particularly the, the Catholics, but often people of other faiths as well. And it's a symbol, I think, of, of people's faith in the presence of God. And I think it inspires in us an understanding of the sense of what Christmas is about, of Emmanuel, of God with us now. And I think that's a, a really important thing to remember. I feel very privileged to, to be the Dean of the Cathedral. In, in a sense, someone once asked me, what, you know, what, what's a Dean? And I said, well, really, I'm the administra administrator. And then I changed my mind. I said, no, I'm the, the caretaker. I'm the custodian of the Cathedral. Um, myself, along with a, a whole team of people that, um, that keep the place running. But my aim as Dean is, is not to just make sure that all the bricks and mortar are in place and safe, 
but rather to make the place, make the cathedral rather, a place of welcome, a place where, where people can come and, and feel at home with this being the mother church of the Archdiocese of Melbourne. So the cathedral itself is, is very beautiful with, with magnificent soaring um, spires and um, the, the warmth of, the, of the, the colour through the glass of the cathedral is really beautiful, this golden hue, particularly late in the day. If you have the opportunity, I encourage you to come to one of our um, evening masses during the summertime. The quality of the light here is, is absolutely glorious. And then the, the magnificent stained glass windows, the, the, the many paintings and statues and stations of the cross, everything about the place is, is an expression of faith. Um, but it's a, a building not only from the past, but it's about the future as well. It's about our faith um, into the 21st century. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and pondered what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Look, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I have no knowledge of man? In answer, the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. And see, your cousin Elizabeth also, in her old age, has conceived a son, and she who was said to be barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. Mary said, Here I am, the Lord's servant. Let it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her.
The song you've just heard was a Kyrie with words taken from the Mass. There are just four words in that song, Lord Christ, have mercy. In the wider context, the song is about forgiveness, about acceptance of who we are, and about hope for the future. And of course, at the end of the week, we all have much hope for the future through the true story of the birth of Jesus Christ and the Christmas celebration. Happy Christmas to you all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out at that time and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now it happened that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Look, as soon as your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that what was said to her from the Lord would be fulfilled. for the uh, Archdiocese of Melbourne uh, for 15 years and I manage the cathedral shop website and uh, the physical shops at the cathedral. Um, apart from that, I'm a cathedral florist for the last six years and also I'm actively involved in bell ringing um, for special occasion for mass, masses and um, for funerals and weddings. Um, I'm, I love to learn about people that come and visit, especially overseas tourists um, from all around the world and being proud of what we have in Melbourne. People should visit St. Pat's because of the architecture, the history, also the bells, and to hear the bells ringing um, during special occasions. This Christmas has been a very special Christmas for me, um, despite COVID. Um, I would, I would like everyone to get together this time of the year and be safe. I'm Michael, I work here. I've worked here since 2016. I clean the place. Uh, there's some wonderful characters you meet here and some terrific music you get to listen to. My Christmas present has already come in the form of a premiership, the Mighty Demons, 
Good luck, everybody. Happy Christmas. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, since he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. For see, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. He has exerted the power of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has taken down princes from thrones and raised up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors of his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with her some three months and then went back home. This year has been challenging for many families and our various church agencies have continued to support the most vulnerable in our community. If you're able, we encourage you to share the gifts of Christmas by donating to the Catholic Care Christmas Appeal. And you can visit the website below to make a donation. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now it happened that at this time, a decree came out from Caesar Augustus that a register should be made of the whole world. This registration, the first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to be registered, 
each to his own town. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to David's town called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Now it happened that while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her son, the firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the living space. In that countryside, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping the night watch over their flock. An angel of the Lord stood over them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Look, I bring you good news of great joy for the whole people, that today a Saviour has been born to you in the town of David, who is Christ the Lord. And this is a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a throng of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth people among people of good will. Now it happened that when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the event which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. All come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. organise everything from funerals to weddings to any booking that comes into the cathedral calendar. Um, 
it is just an amazing place to work for. The people are brilliant to work with. Um, coming into the cathedral itself, it's an amazing place. I feel really blessed to be working here. Um, if you ever can come visit, you will be amazed at some of the um, beautiful things that you will find. I wish you all a wonderful Christmas, a happy new year, and I know that COVID has hit us hard, but please, you know, hopefully you all reunite with family soon. I first came to the cathedral in 2008 as a young treble as part of the cathedral choir. And it's an absolutely amazing venue to singing. And I hope that you can come here soon and celebrate with us. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I hope to see you soon. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. On the inhabitants of a country in shadow, dark as death, light has blazed forth. You have enlarged the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest time as they exult when they are dividing plunder. For the yoke that was weighed on them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, those you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a son has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and dominion has been laid on his shoulders, and this is the name he has been given. Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His rule will be great, and there will be no end of peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. Secure and established in fair judgment and righteousness. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord's Sabbath will do this.
I feel very privileged to be in this cathedral. What I like about the cathedral is, you know, first of all, the architecture, the neo-Gothic architecture, which is very different from those uh, back in Rome, in Italy, where I used to do my formation study there for four years. Um, I find St. Patrick's Cathedral um, as a very elegant church, uh, cathedral with high ceiling and very skinny pillars. But it's also creating this space in the middle of you know, the very bustling um, Melbourne city. You can, when, you, when you walk into the cathedral, you know, there's a sense of sacredness and there's a sense of a quietness where you, know, you can actually you know, meet God perhaps or even come to be aware of yourself. So there are times that I will be just sitting here quietly um, and just sensing that silence. Of course, we are in the middle of the city. So sometimes we do hear the, the passing trams coming from, from the side of the cathedral. And just very close by is the Metropolitan um, Fire Brigade and you hear the sirens. So while you know, we are in this sacred space, I don't feel that I am disconnected with the rest of the world. Um, I've been made assistant priest since the 4th of December, and that was the date that I was ordained. And I feel very privileged to be in this cathedral, being my first uh, placement. In some parts of the evening, I think around 3 o'clock, you can see a streams of light coming from the right side of the cathedral if you are facing the, the main entrance and the light passes through these amber stained glass windows and just create this warmth and orangey kind of uh, atmosphere. You can almost sense uh, some kind of warmness even, even in the middle of you know, the Melbourne very cold winter. My name is Clarence. And, and I'm Robbie. And we are a sacristan team here in St. Patrick's. We've been here since 1st of July. Uh, St. Patrick's is a very um, interesting place. Lots of things happen. And we, being new here, we are learning constantly about new things happening, new functions, new things to do, new, new celebrations. And um, as we go along, things seem to be uh, a lot more interesting every time you, you get something come along. There's or, always something new around. Yeah, something new. Uh, we really love working here. It's a very interesting place and something we've uh, sort of treasured with work. We look forward to Christmas coming and we hope uh, this year Christmas will be uh, different from the last two years and most people can gather freely and enjoy their fellowship and their families together. <music>
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A branch shall spring from the root of Jesse. A shoot will grow from its roots. On him will rest the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and insight, the spirit of counsel and power, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight will be in fear of the Lord. His judgment will not be by appearances, his verdict not given hearsay. He will judge the weak with righteousness and give fair sentence for the poor of the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips bring death to the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his waist and truth the belt around his hips. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard lie down with the kid, calf, lion, and fat stock beast together with a little boy to lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together. The lion will eat hay and like the ox. The infant will play over the hole of the adder. The baby will put its hand in the viper's lair. No hurt, no harm will be done on all my holy mountain. For the land will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That day, the root of Jesse, standing as a signal for the people, will be sought out by the nations and its dwelling will be glorious. Christmas is a time to celebrate, absolutely. But it's also a time when it could be a very hard time for people that are suffering, people who are homeless, people that don't have family around. It reminds me that our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords didn't decide to come in a big chariot onto this earth to proclaim his amazingness, no. He came without a bed to lie on. And it makes me think how fortunate we are for those that do have beds to lie on. Christmas to me, yes, it's a time for family, but it's also a time for me to give and to show love to those that are in need. Maybe we can think about that this year as we celebrate the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Let's Give a little bit more this Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Thank you for joining us for our second Jesus is Christmas carol special. We really hope you enjoyed the hymns and seeing our beautiful St. Patrick's Cathedral. We want to thank all of our wonderful performers and we want to wish you and your families a very happy and joy-filled Christmas. Thank you.